Hey, what's up? It's Max Hardy 18, and uh, I just got done watching the Destination X pay-per-view from the company of TNA. Um, there were nine matches total. I wrote down the matches, what I rated them, and gave my thoughts on this pay-per-view. To me, this was an utterly disappointing pay-per-view. This is the first TNA pay-per-view I've watched since the 2004. Um, I can't remember which pay-per-view it was, but I saw AJ Styles versus The Abyss in like a no, in like a no disqualification match or something like that, S somewhere along the lines of that. But anyway, this is the first pay-per-view I've seen in TNA in almost a good five years. So four to five years, um, and I I wasn't really impressed. The last four matches of the uh, show helped this show out. Okay, the last four matches saved the show, but it was still utterly disappointing. The first match we had here was the beautiful people and their new lackey. I can't remember her name. Versus Roxy, the Governor, Sarah Palin, and Taylor Wilde. Um, this was the utmost worst match of the night. I gave it a 0 0.7 star rating. It ended with Governor, Roxy, and Taylor Wilde with a victory. Um, since it was the first match of the night, I can't remember really how they won, but I just remember that they did. The next match was an unscheduled match of Eric Young versus. Brutus Magnus. Um, I didn't really make a prediction on this because I didn't know it was going to be on the card. It's kind of a fast match. I rated it a 1.1. Um, Eric Young showed to be pretty good talent, but just in the end, just couldn't do it against Brutus Magnus. And the next match was Abyss and Matt Morgan in a 10,000 tax match. This match was really disappointing. I thought it was going to get around a 2.2 rating from me, and it got a 1.3. Um, it was the ending was kind of cool. I kind of liked how we did that little kick to the table full of attacks, and Abyss ended up losing to Matt Morgan, which I kind of predicted that he would have. But still, utterly disappointing. Uh, I thought it was going to be a lot better. And I thought it was going to be a little longer, but Unfortunately not. Um, Kong vs. Bolt won the best match, won the worst match. It was the second worst match. Um, but it uh, it was an okay women's title match. I've seen a lot better, especially in the old WWF Attitude Era. I saw like some good 2.3 women's title matches, and for this match. To get a 0 0.8, that's just sickening, alright? It's a title match. I know it's women. Not all women can wrestle. Only few, There's only few that can, like Nikki James, Victoria, Trish Stratus, Lita, um, girls like that, you know? So, this was utterly disappointing. It was, it won, I didn't even really pay attention into this match. It won that great. Um, the next match... Joe vs. Steiner ended really early in Samoa Joe getting disqualified by him the refs. Um, it was a, uh, I rated it a 0 0.2, but after the match and later in the show, with the storyline of him just dominating uh, Scott Steiner outside of the ring, I found it as mere entertainment, so I moved it up 0 0.7, which in the end it got a 0 0.9 star rating. Um, this next match was the first match that ended up catching my interest. It was AJ Styles versus Booker T. Um, I really enjoyed this match. I enjoy watching AJ Styles and Booker T. AJ Styles is a good wrestler. Booker T is a good entertainer. I really thought that Booker would win this match because I didn't think AJ would come back from being injured so fast. Er, come back like a month after like a month after he can't return he get a title I didn't really expect that to happen but it did and it was a good match overall I gave it a 2.2 uh, rating which was the best rating so far in the night Beer Money versus Team 3D in the Off the Wagon Challenge 
I knew that it was going to end this way, or I kind of figured it would end this way. Um, well, what happened was Beer Money was going to get disqualified for uh, punching the ref or something like that. I can't really remember. And then Jim Cornette said, hell no to that. So they had to go on, and then they got counted out. And Team 3D got to keep their jobs, but Beer Money got to keep the titles. 3D won with a... Uh, with a count out call so I gave this match a 2.1 I had it up to a 2.4 as the best match of the night so far but since the crappy ending it went down 0.3 star rating the next match was the ultimate X match this match was phenomenal I thought this match was going to be a 2 on 2 on one match, which it really wasn't. I didn't think, it, I didn't expect too much of this match. I expected it to get like a 2.7, 2.8, but it got a 3.8 for me, which is the, the highest match of the night. It was a really good match. The ending was a little dull, but the moves that they put on through the match were just phenomenal. Um, they put on a lot of high flying moves and a lot of high flying ethics, which really impressed me in this day and age of wrestling. So uh, I believe Destination X is the only pay-per-view that we'll see good, high-flying X division talent and quality. Unless you see some, <coughs> <coughs> unless you see the X division in like a lockdown cage match or something like that. That's the only reason you'll get more entertainment. The final match of the night was a uh, Sting and Angle. It ended with Sting and a Stinger or. Uh, Scorpion Death Drop on Kurt Angle won that too big of a match. It won very action filled, set for the end. The end kind of made the match. It was, I gave it a 2.5, won the best of the night, but it did beat AJ and Booker and Beer Money and Team 3D. But the Ultimate X match really took this pay per view beyond standards. <clears throat> that match made this pay per view. It was 0.2 star rating away from getting a 4 four star match type. You know how hard that is? That's like getting a main that's like a main event on a main pay per view like WrestleMania and SummerSlam, Royal Rumble and Survivor Series. Um a couple other things I noticed in this match. I noticed that Bubba when uh, he was getting when they were showing a promo with the team 3D it showed Bubba hitting a Bubba bomb on Christian Cage. I thought that was kind of unique. I didn't expect them to put it in there, but they showed Bubba hitting the Bubba bomb on Christian Cage, showing them how much they dislike Christian Cage's decision decision in leaving TNA. Um, the one night with ODB was horrible. It was not entertaining at all. That guy that she's with, I heard, is going to make his debut in wrestling. He was signed like a year ago, and it's been getting into dark matches and other stuff like that. Um, it really won. It really didn't make me any happy or any sad. James Storm, this guy is entertaining. I mean, come on. James Storm made Beer Money Incorporated. I mean, who would have thought Beer Money Incorporated would be a good tag team? I need to kind of speed this up. Um, we want Rhino and Sheik Abdul Bashir. So next pay per view, which I believe is locked down, Rhino and Sheik Abdul need to be in this uh, pay per view because they are entertainment. Rhino can pull off good promos. Sheik Abdul Bashir is one heck of a heel. It would just be good to have these guys in the next pay per view, even if they fight each other. And this pay per view had way too many promos. TNA, you got to cut down on promos, all right? This was. Not the best pay-per-view. It's not the worst I've ever seen, but God, it was horrible. Um, this is my review of TNA Destination X on next 2018. Thanks for watching.